Hello YouTube, this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music and we're going to give a brief overview of 29 piano patches from 29 different VST libraries. The first one we'll look at is the play, the East-West, and what I'm going to do is show the interface as we play an excerpt of some Chopin. So here we go, and then I'll switch between the different pianos.
So there we have it, a brief overview of the interface, just a visual of the interface, and also the sound of each of the pianos. Okay, next, what we'll do is go through the interfaces starting from where we are. This is Nate Dio Library, the 1990 Studio Piano. And as we see, we have different articulations that we can choose from, which is sort of unique. your staccato. Staccatissimo. And where most piano libraries have their sustain patch. And then we have pedal noise, uh, general noise, and response, resonance. All these are adjustable comes with an included reverb. And then previous to that, we have the Cine Samples Piano in blue. Whoops, I got both of them now. Okay, here's the Cine Samples. A lot of different parameters. There's your reverb. Also, you have close room and surround mics, which are switchable. So we could take our close off or our surround off. And as you do that, of course, it adjusts the samples resident. It even has tape and some other, it has quite a few different features. Let's take a look at the 1928 by Dio. So, <clears throat> We click on options, we have pedal, pedal noise, there's a curve, velocity curve that we can adjust. Also, we have attack release, relative volume, reverb control. Also, we can adjust the low if we want more low or less low. Same is true with mid and high. sample tank has a lot of patches but one of them is their piano acoustic piano grand piano Some of the other categories they have are acoustic drums, electric drums, and so on. But it's quite a nice sounding piano. And you have your controls on the bottom, low gain, so. So 
want it louder or thinner on the bottom. Your general gain, or actually for your high gain. And then here's your general gain. So you have your mid frequency gain as well. So some nice adjustments there. Then we have the Vienna Imperial, and this is by Vienna Symphonic Library. One of my favorite piano libraries, it's Bosendofer. Rich sound. Then we have Motu's Mach 5, or Mach, yeah, Mach 5 3, and then they have a piano called the Grand 278. So it's quite a nice piano. velocity curve adjustment and other parameters. By the way, going briefly back to the, the, Vienna, the Vienna Imperial, they have um, in their settings, very useful feature, MIDI sensitivity. So if you want a softer piano, you can just slide it over. If you go this way, if you play soft, it gives you high velocity. So usually I'll use it when I want a soft patch, a soft piano patch. They have sympathetic. So when you type on a, or when you hit a key, you have overtones, so this is more sympathetic with the overtones. Without it. With it. Here are the overtones coming in. So nice feature. Very nice. And then we have going back or going to the Hallian now. So here are your parameters, reverb with, reverb, mix. By Steinberg. And of course, there are many other patches available in Hallion 6. And then we have the Grand. And this is by Steinberg. It's their standalone, or not standalone, it's a it's a library consisting only of pianos. You select the model, so and you have a lot of different models. There's the Yamaha C7. So it takes a while to load. You have an equalizer, so you can have gain on various frequencies, as well as Q. And you can see how that visually adjusts so one is the default setting, which works quite well. Yeah. 
Dev Ambience Control, Convolution Reverb, as well as Algorithmic. Then Mix, Pre-Delay, All Natural, Attributes of Reverb. Then you have your Velocity Control as well. So I have a higher velocity now, and this inverts it. You can tell the difference. I'm using about the same pressure. Quadratic, exponential, no doubt. Linear. And you have some options. Fairly comprehensive. Okay, let's then go. We don't want to spend too much time on any one library. Here's the Oliver Arnold's from Spitfire. It's basically a felt piano. grand piano. And so you have your pedal dynamics, pedal volume, and it's auto pedal volume, reverb, different presets, and for power users, if you have a powerful desktop, then you would use the power, which uses more system resources. So let's take a look at the next one on our list, Alicia Keys, Alicia's Keys. The interface, as we saw before, uh, we have presets, reverb presets. You can put in your own, you can make your own. There's your room, has the amount and size of reverb, convolution, size, spread. The artist would basically be reverb as you're hearing it, and audience would be as the audience is hearing it. So further away. So if I go audience. Not much difference there for that one. Then you have your velocity curve as we saw in the other ones. Here's concave. So it's going to be a little louder attack initially. Linear. Latency and finger attack, key release. Um, pedal. Resonance setting. Noise. So if you want piano noise or microphone noise, here's microphone noise. So the next one is a Maverick, which comes with uh, Ultimate 11. I'm sure it'll be included in all the other Ultimates. I guess Ultimate 12 will be coming up fairly soon. So so you have some tone settings, you have the lid. Um, an equalizer, a compressor. So a different setup than most keyboards. 
Then you have your reverb settings, distance, size, amount, anatomy, which gives you your linear velocity or okay, here they call it softer velocity. So as you see, the curve is, starts out slower at the beginning. A nice sound. All, the all of these piano libraries are quite nice. Okay, then we have the gentleman. Again, you would have that if you have the ultimate 11, possibly ultimate 10. Same kind of settings because they're contact libraries. Close lid. More dynamic range. More more resonance. Yeah. Now the gentleman may not actually be a grand piano, it might be a really nice upright, but it it sounds comparable nevertheless. And then we have cinematic keys. A very unique library. Here's their grand piano and you have all these effects you can put on it. So if you want to put a delay, you have a delay. filters. So low frequency. Distortion. I just put that one in there because it is a nice um, piano and at the same time if you want some effects on it then you can add these So there's some, take the filter off and the distortion, just keep the delay. And then we have the cinematic studio piano, which is just a dedicated piano library. So there's your mic, spot, close, main, room. Reverb adjustable. Moving up, we have the room piano in the Orchestral Tools Metropolis Arc 2. So the interface, as we briefly saw before, um, you have a lot of mics. Whoops, I think we got another piano going on. Yeah, we do. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. 
So you have your um, your close, your AB mic. You have a tree mic over here if you want to add that in. I forget offhand what the MS is. And then you have your surround mics. So a very nice sounding piano. They also have, oh, that's your mic positions. The mod wheel allows you to increase your velocity, although. Looks like it wants to stay around piano or pianissimo. And then you also have other settings. There's your layers, your piano and your mezzo piano. So I just took off mezzo piano and just put it back on. Also you have your attack curve, release. And this is something that's part of, that's sort of unique to the uh, orchestral tools, it allows you to mix articulations. Also gives you other options like crossfade, velocity mode, dynamic crossfade, and so on, sustain pedal, which is a study in its own right. So the next one we'll look at, Metropolis, Met Metropolis 1. Very similar to the um, Metropolis 2 in its format, but the sound is quite different. So we have all the mics engaged. So forte sort of showing. And if I move it from here. Yeah, usually it's a little more pronounced. There's your forte forte. So it's key sensitive right now. It's being triggered by key velocity. That's a forte. Supposedly. Okay, then the giant, which I believe is part of the ultimate 11 series. So it's, it has a concert grand sound, but it could be a large upright. And there's your controls, very similar to the Maverick and the other one we looked at uh, out of the, con the uh, Ultimate. anatomy and the tone and the equalizer, low keys, compressor even. And 
then we have the complete control. Actually, it's it's a New York piano. It's also just in regular contact. Oops. Different presets. So all of your controls are right laid out here. The lid, you've got that. You can close it, half close it. Picture doesn't change, so it doesn't. And then closed. Add a reverb. Or increase it, it's activated. Also has a velocity curve, so you can have a neutral one, make it probably less softer here. Yeah. With high velocity curve. Whoops. And it's right in your face, right? So that's a little more on the interface there. Then we have Keyscape, one of my major favorite libraries. One of the newer Spectrosonics libraries. And over here you see all the different choices, not only acoustic pianos, but lots of electronic pianos as well. Uprights. So under acoustic pianos, if we go up here, you've got rock, C7 rock, C7 cinematic. cinematic scoring. Beautiful piano they put out. I don't want to digress into the uh, acoustics, but they are amazing. Okay, the Rhodes LA Custom. So I'm digressing. Okay, here's the Rhodes. blends of different pianos. So you got a lot of different keyboards available. Vintage keyboards, even wind keyboards. It's an amazing library. Then we'll go to the emotional piano. A lot of people really like the emotional piano, as do I. And that's by Sound Iron. Does have an arpeggiator, so that's different than a lot of the other ones. So here's up. So you just play a chord and then it'll arpeggiate the chord in whatever, like here's zigzag down.
but nevertheless, beautiful piano by its in its own right. And then we have the ivory, which is really a beautiful piano. And you have a lot of parameters you can adjust, as you can see. sound boards, extra resonant. You can get key noise, dynamic range, trim, perspectives from the performer or audience. And then you have these different presets. And this is the American Concert D. They have a lot of other ones. Bosendorfer, Italian to Amazing Pianos. Uh, the American Concert D, I believe, is the most recent one they've done. And you have your effects. They even have chorus, and you can, um, if we go back to the session, you can adjust the number of voices. Go at 24, go to 48. They, of course, have the velocity preset. And one other thing they have, if I can find it real quick. which is sort of unique to them. And some other keyboard libraries have it as well. I'd say uh, you can add a string to it as well. Problems with some of these libraries, they have so many options, it's hard to find exactly what you're looking for. Unless you use it every day or fairly frequently. It's possible maybe they don't have it in this particular library. And my, I know it's in some of the other ones that they have. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Now Easy Keys has a really nice sound. And okay. I had some technical difficulties when I loaded uh, an interesting feature of Easy Key. So let's see if it works this time. So here we go. Now, in addition to the piano, the grand piano, we have these, if you go into the browser, we have all of these variations. So I'm choosing ballad, straight eight, pre-chorus, variation. So we can play those variations, and if we like what we hear, we can drag it into the MIDI block down here and actually import it into our, into our DAW. And for example, there's a ballad uh, pre-chorus, here's an intro.
So they're very professional done, professionally done. Here's some jazz, three, four. Here's an intro. And here's the fourth. The variations increase in complexity. Here's variation four. But anyway, as you see, there's a lot of add-on packs you can get. They come with some default libraries, pop, rock, country, gospel, you name it, jazz, blues, funk. So I just thought I'd mention that. It's a great sounding piano and it has some amazing features to for songwriting primarily. And you can just learn from the voicings I use. Okay, and the next library as we go back, um, Hellion Sonic. And there's the interface, very similar to the Hellion 6. So here are your commands, down here are your adjustments, tone color emphasis, um, pan key follow, and so on. EQ, you can Increase the gain at the different bands, low, mid, and high. And then we have Alchemy. Now the actual Alchemy library is no longer available, but if you get Logic Pro, then you have access to most of the patches that came in the original library. So here's your acoustic piano. And then we have the, the piano five. This is by Artura. It sort of sounds, even though they call it intimate grand, it sort of sounds, and it might be a modeled piano, modeled grand. But I thought I'd just include that one for variety. You have your velocity curve, mic set up, reverb, your master gain and so on. And then we have addictive keys. So here's a setup for that. And they have several pianos in their collection. The Studio Grand is loaded here. Whoops. These are previews. Okay, so here's an ambient preview. And here's where you can edit some of the settings. We have effects. Here's your ribbon mic. There's your pedals. You can adjust those. You have filters. You can pitch it up or down slightly. By brought rate and so on. Very nice sounding piano, as you can tell. Then going back in time, we have the Goliath Steinway. So 
So if you get the Goliath, the Goliath package by um, East West, and it uses the play engine, then you will automatically get the piano that comes along with it. Really nice Steinway. And then here's the Bosen, Bosendofer by East West Sounds. It has, it's a diamond, so you have three mic positions, which are all loaded. Beautiful piano. It was one of my favorites when that came out. Actually, I really like the Steinway as well, which is also included in the library. You have the Steinway and the Yamaha C7. So that pretty well concludes the wrap up of the 29 libraries. I deleted the uh, libraries 9 through 29 just to make sure we didn't get any more glitches in making the video. <clears throat> so this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music. If you like the video, please click like and please subscribe so you'll be notified as soon as another video comes out. So Bill McFadden, Tone Pure Music, signing off.